In this video we're going to test the Flashback Mini using the protocol that Tech Support gave us uh, yesterday, which uh, turns out it doesn't work any better than uh, before, but uh, we're going to document it with this video just to prove that. What they want us to try is to uh, send the, our custom tone print to the Flashback Mini pedal and then uh, unplug the USB cable and turn off the power to the Flashback Mini. Uh, I guess wait a little while, then turn the power back on, and uh, they claim that will work okay, but it doesn't. Uh, the problem is, the problem behavior is that uh, clicking store to pedal in the tone print editor software causes a different tone print to uh, be stored in the flashback mini, not the desired tone print. Uh, the desired tone print, which we've been uh, working with here, is a pretty simple one. We start with the tape template, uh, turn on the kill dry set the delay to 83 milliseconds and uh, set the FB high cut to 2 kilohertz. Um, the kill dry on with a short delay like that makes the electric guitar sound a lot like an acoustic guitar. There's a short delay the way acoustic guitarists uh, would notice. But when uh, when the flashback mini uh, gets the stored a pedal uh, it changes to something really strange. It has a uh, repeating delay which is not what is desired. So uh, we've already set up the uh, tone print and my brother will now demonstrate it by playing uh, a few notes. Uh, you probably won't be able to hear that there's a little delay, but uh, it's there. What you will be able to hear later is how it changes to something radically different when we click store to pedal. So go ahead. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to click store to pedal now and you'll hear the difference. Okay, I just click store to pedal. Go ahead. So now there's a, uh, a long delay before it begins and then it repeats quite a bit before it dies out, which is not what we wanted. So now I'm going uh, go, to do the steps that tech support suggested, which is to disconnect the USB cable and then cycle the power off and on. So first the USB cable. Now the power. I'll wait about 10 seconds and then put the power plug back in. This power supply, by the way, is a Donner DP1, which uh, measured, ignore that, which measured about 9.3 volts, which should be plenty. So um, go ahead and pluck a string. As you can see, sucking the power off and on made no difference. It still behaves poorly. So I'm going to stop the video now.